Beth was really, really funny. I think that's one of the things that would say most about her, you know. She could be really opinionated, <laughs> you know. She uh, had to have her way. Beth was sick for nine months. We were told that she had leukaemia. She was on the ward for seven of those months. She just learned to live in the hospital. She learned to see the doctors and nurses as, as her friends, as her pals, and they, they loved her. You know, I mean, they were so sad when she passed away. We were told the bone marrow transplant would be our last chance. After the transplant, we had a really fantastic month. So she came home uh, and she was on several weeks of being incredibly healthy and it just felt like we were getting back to normal a little bit. And then one day the temperature came back. It was difficult, you know, we were told, yeah, this is it, you know, it's come back. When you're told your daughter's going to die, there's a couple of things that come into your mind at the beginning. The first thing is, you know, is it going to hurt? The second question is, well, you know, is there a children's hospice? You know, what's, the, what's, the, what's next? Uh, we're told, well, there's no children's hospice in Ireland. It shocked us. There's such a difference in knowing that you're moving from a, a fight of trying to cure a child to one of knowing that you're going to have to uh, you know, try to make their death as comfortable as possible. She lasted six days after that. The services we got were okay, you know, the people were fantastic, but the services weren't wonderful and she did die in a lot of pain. After this, I was driven then to start working towards building a, a hospice in Ireland. I heard about this movement. A wonderful woman, Jane McKenna, she lost both her daughters. Uh, so she was leading this fight to build a hospice. David got in touch. In their case, I know poor Beth had a pretty tough time. They were very much alone with this at home. They would have really wished, you know, more than anything in the world that they could have had the support of what we've got here now at Laurel Inn House. That was really how we started our connection and the connection then obviously with Intel. Laurel Inn opened in 2011 and it's into its second year now. To actually develop the building itself cost 5.5 million. We got no government support when you try to raise it through coffee mornings and local groups and initiatives and people like Intel coming on board, it's been fantastic. Alongside me all this time has been Kim, my wife, and Harry, and my youngest daughter Kate, who was born after Beth died. They've all been fantastic. I started getting involved with the Intel Site Signature Charity as well here. That really has been fantastic. You know, we found you know, tremendous enthusiasm for raising money for a children's hospice in Ireland here at Intel. Literally hundreds and hundreds of Intel employees have come forward and uh, volunteered for dozens of events. The Site Charity Committee is brilliant. They came behind me 100%. So you know, we ran a, a big cycle ride, the fun race bake sales, family fun days in, you know, where employees dressed up as clowns and uh, we brought in puppet shows. It was really heartwarming and that allowed us to raise 60,000 uh, which we used to buy two uh, transport ambulances for the two charities. We also made a great contribution in terms of the skills and expertise that we could bring to the building of the hospice. Intel have been fantastic to basically do everything from the day-to-day -day fundraising and support to their team initiatives and then ultimately I suppose to come out here and take the time and meet with our architect and designers and put us on the right track in terms of what we'd need from an IT point of view and make sure from day one the wiring was done correctly and our networking was correct. During Beth's illness and afterwards, and the last few years, you know, I look back, they're incredibly dark years. But I've found that during these times, there's been a lot um, which has kept me going. The Intel family, in many ways, has, it's sheltered at times when I've really needed it. Having all these people alongside you, you know, saying, you know, we, we don't understand your pain, but we want to stand by you and raise money or awareness, we want to help. That's an astonishing thing. This has helped me tremendously, you know, and it continues to help me tremendously. 
But it's been a few years raising money and awareness and it's not been an easy fight. But that day when we opened the hospice, 2011 was astonishing. The president was there, music. It was a sad day, but it was a really happy day too.